out. But what I'm going to ask you to do, again, just kind of a couple of minutes on each condition. Yeah. PBC, PSC, AIH. Now, some of this is feeding the the section of ARSO questions I'm going to ask you in a second. Yeah. Now, so for example, we've had somebody write in, say that, um, my HEP says I do not have AIH. When I'm only on ARSO, my numbers go up. When I'm on placanil or steroids, my liver numbers go down. Mm -hmm. So why could this possibly be? Am I on the right dose of ARSO? So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about ARSO dose shortly. Um, somebody's been diagnosed with PBC and AIH. Yeah. On steroids for eight weeks. What are the statistics for success in that? Yeah. Um, and then... Um, Somebody's been put on prednisone for sepsis. Yep. Um, and hematologist says they are severely immune compromised. Mm -hmm. So can we talk a little just about those three conditions and, and just kind of set the record straight? Yeah, okay. So I'll talk about autoimmune hepatitis first because in some ways it's the simplest. So autoimmune hepatitis is where the immune system recognizes the cells of the liver as being foreign and it attacks them. So it's actually the same process as would happen if you had viral hepatitis. So if you had hepatitis A um, infecting the cells of the liver, the immune system would see the hepatitis A, attack the liver cells and kill them off. And in AIH, um, it's happening because of um, a process of mimicry. So something's happened in the cells that's made it look foreign. All right. So it's just the same as say thyroid disease or type 1 diabetes so type 1 diabetes the immune system recognizes the beta cells of the pancreatic islet that produce insulin as being foreign mounts an immune response to them and gets rid of them so it's a really simple classical autoimmune condition now conditions like that um, will continue until one of two things happens one is the body regains control which sometimes happens um but more commonly you run out of liver cells for you know the the fire burns out when there are no more trees to burn so you run out of liver cells and so that's a, a very significant situation sometimes yeah. the immune system can re-establish control or the doctors give you something that switches the immune system off and that's where prednisolone and the various other immunosuppressive drugs come from so autoimmune hepatitis there is no other treatment in the first instance than steroids although there are some alternatives for steroids um, later on to keep it under control but you are using it to switch off the immune system and to keep it under control to stop the liver being damaged so that's a disease of the liver cells so PBC is the next simplest because that's a disease of the bile duct cells and not the liver cells. So there's still cells in the liver, but it's the ones lining the bile ducts, not the actual liver cells. And because it's not the liver cells that are attacked, you don't get liver failure with it. What you do is get bile duct failure. Um, so you lose the ability to flow bile normally, and that has all the effects that we've talked about. So the bile builds up and irritates in the liver, causing some secondary damage, and it obviously has the effects on nutrition that we've talked about. Okay, So it's a disease of not liver injury, it's of bile duct injury. And interestingly, the treatments we use are not steroids and things. The reason being you don't need them, because if you simply take away the consequences of the bile duct failure by altering the bile acid pool that does the trick for most people although we many years ago looked at steroids for the treatment of pbc and the answer is they actually work but they don't work to an extent that makes it worth the side effects that people get with them so it's not that it's not that they don't work it's that you don't need to use them and that's an important distinction so psc is a really complicated condition in a for a variety of reasons and it too is a disease of bile duct failure but it is a more complicated version of bile duct failure because it can affect different bits of the bile duct in different ways so pbc is a disease of the small bile ducts within the liver psc is the disease of any of the bile ducts all the way down from um, the, the small bile ducts in the liver all the way around to the big bile duct that joins the bowel and in fact the, the gallbladder. So I, there's something additional I didn't know about gallbladder. So 
it's when I said I, that's everything I know, I, I found something else. So it's a disease of anywhere in the bile ducts, and that gives you very different appearances in different people. It's a disease of scarring, not a chemical effect. So that makes it very difficult to treat. So it's all about scar formation. And then the big difference, really big difference, is um, it's associated with cancer. So it's associated with bile duct cancer, and it's also associated with colon cancer, neither of which um, you see in PBC or autoimmune hepatitis. And so therefore, and, and it has no therapy at the moment, um, unlike PBC, where we have good therapies and, and new therapies and ditto with autoimmune hepatitis. So it is like a complex version of PBC with a few stings in the tail. Now, just if that wasn't complicated enough, you can also get um, situations where you have a bit of two of those conditions. And the connection is always autoimmune hepatitis. So you can have PBC with some features of autoimmune hepatitis and autoimmune hepatitis with some features of PBC. You can have a 100% one, 100% the other, 90, 10, 50, 50, 10, 90, 100, you know, zero. Um, and you can also get an association between autoimmune hepatitis and PSC, although you never get an association between PBC and PSC. So the connection is always autoimmune hepatitis. Now, if you have both PBC and autoimmune hepatitis, if, then you need to treat both of them as you would treat each of them individually. So you treat the PBC as you treat the PBC, and you treat the autoimmune hepatitis as you would treat the autoimmune hepatitis. And that's really important. If they genuinely are both there, you genuinely need to treat both. And if it's autoimmune hepatitis and PSC, you need to certainly treat the autoimmune hepatitis. There is no treatment for PSC, but we know that the autoimmune hepatitis can burn out into a PSC-like appearance, so that becomes very important. Okay, so you've got three conditions and two overlap syndromes between them. And if that wasn't complicated enough, we now know that PBC itself can look a lot like autoimmune hepatitis. So in the past, it was an article of faith amongst the pathologists that a particular process you see in the liver, so some actual inflammation around the liver cells, we call interface hepatitis, is always a feature, always a feature of autoimmune hepatitis. In fact, it isn't always a feature of autoimmune hepatitis. It can also be a feature of PBC in people who don't respond to URSO. So it can also be a feature of more aggressive PBC. What that means is um, there are a lot of legacy people who were diagnosed with overlap a long time ago, who, if we were to look at them again, don't have overlap. They have the more aggressive form of PBC. And of course, the treatments are very different. We know that steroids are not a particularly good treatment for the more aggressive form of PBC, whereas drugs like beta-colic acid and beta fibrate some of the newer drugs are very good treatments for that so misdiagnosing overlap leaves people on steroids and azathioprine things when they don't need them and won't benefit from them and means that people don't get the right treatment so we are progressively looking at everybody who's ever had a diagnosis of overlap to look at it critically um now at the end of the day um i can predict with a reasonable accuracy, whether somebody has bad PBC or or overlap, okay? And that's based on the nuances of the blood test values and some of the nuances of the biopsy. But I get it wrong. And I remember not so long ago in the clinic, um, one of the fellows had started somebody on steroids um, uh, with what looked like urso non-responsive PBC. And I was going, why have they started them on steroids? Ooh, all of that, um, you know, need to educate them properly. And then I looked at the test and they'd all completely normalized on steroids. So I would never in a million years have thought that was overlap, but it was. So at the end of the day, the only true way to know if it's overlap is to treat with steroids, okay? Which adds complexity. Now, if it is overlap, then... It, then the aspect related to autoimmune hepatitis, which is the ALT blood test, which is different to the ALP, which is the PVC one, will improve rapidly. And there is another test called the IgG, which is always elevated in autoimmune hepatitis, and that will improve rapidly. If those don't improve rapidly with a month of steroids, then 
however suggestive it is, it aims to improve hepatitis. And if those treatments aren't working, which they're not, you should stop them. So we only ever use what we call a trial of steroids. It's for a fixed period of time for four weeks. And then we make an objective decision about whether there is sufficient evidence to do it. So we tend not to talk about overlap because it has baggage to the past. We tend to talk about um, steroid and non-steroid responsive components to the disease. So the really important question is, is there something in this individual that is likely to be steroid responsive, in which case you do a trial of steroids, and if not, you go down second line therapy for PBC. Gideon, who many of you will know, always says that it's about 10 to 1 um, high risk PBC versus overlap, and I think he's probably about right. So anybody who's out there who's on steroids and acetherapy and has done for years, and the tests still aren't normal, go and talk to your doctor and say, should I be on a beta-colic acid, basically? And I can tell you of, I mean, lots of people who come to see me, a very nice lady who was wrecked by steroid side effects um, and, um, you know, long-term steroid side effects and never, ever got control of a disease. And now she's got perfect disease on Urso and Bisafibrate. Perfect. Um, okay. so it's worth looking at it critically. PSC is more complicated. Um, in the question specifically, there is something that is worth talking about, which is, is diagnosing, this is somebody who had sepsis. So sepsis is a, a blood infection, bacteria getting into the blood, it usually is a result of a water infection or a, or a gallbladder infection or something like that. Um, and somebody who had abnormal liver tests after that, um, and has been investigated and has been found to not have any autoantibodies. Um, and the question is, do they have an antibody negative PBC or, or an antibody negative PSC? Okay. And the reason I wanted to mention is because this is a very important trap people fall into. So th this is a, a man. Okay. So men that almost never get antibody negative PBC. So PBC is 90% women and of the men who we do see 98% have antibodies. So you can, as the Americans say, do the math on that. The chances that the frequent, the number of PBC patients who are AMA negative or antibody negative men is almost infinitesimally small. So I would look at something else. So PSC is commoner in men than in women. So that is a plausible thing to think about but the MRCP was negative, okay? The MRCP was negative. Um, now that is the definitive test for PSC. So the antibodies are negative and the MRCP is negative. So that's looking like not PSC to me. Um, and the biopsy showed drug-induced changes. That's starting to sound like something different. And the trap I wanted to discuss is that sepsis itself causes bile duct injury. Probably the commonest thing that people phone me up about when I'm on call for the liver unit, the general liver practice we do, is sick people with abnormal liver blood tests. And it's always a PBC-like pattern. And it is part of the effects of sepsis. So all of those effects of sepsis, they affect your kidneys and they affect your heart. But they also affect your bile duct. So you get a mild version of PBC or PSA with bile duct injury with sepsis, but it will improve after time. We treat everybody with Urso in that situation because it's a non-specific healer of the bile ducts, but you don't need anything else. At some point, somebody needs to check that off Urso, your blood tests return to normal. And if they don't return to normal, you need to have the MRCP repeated in a year or so. And I do appreciate we've crossed the line into specific medical guidance, but we see this time and time again, set post sepsis, liver function tests being overinterpreted. But just if all the tests are negative, that usually suggests that it's nothing to do with PVC or PSC or autumn hepatitis. Perfect. Thank you so much. Right. We 